Newcastle take on Manchester City this weekend and Kevin De Bruyne, he's kind of already back, but he could be back in Premier League action. Nabade and Will join me to discuss a very, very big game for both teams. Man City, this is this is it, isn't it? This is the it's like go. Now's the time when they start to charge. And obviously, there's so much discussion in in all realms of football when it comes to Man City and it comes to the title race. The thing that's spoken about a lot is De Bruyne coming back and Man City pulling away. So, is this the beginning of that debate? I think we're kind of at the beginning already. They had the result against Everton and Sheffield United, two sort of like awkward games that they, they look pretty steely through. They're still leaky at the back. There's still something not right defensively. Um, but I think Jurgen Klopp said like De Bruyne is warming up and the whole country's shaking. When the opposing gaffer's saying that, like something's going on uh, and he does look, there's something about him. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's us as football fans that we've given him this image that he's going to be the guy who gets him on the home run. Uh, but I struggled to see any other outcome they've done this for four or five seasons straight so yeah well so i always find myself playing devil's advocate with this i'm gonna do it again and uh, <laughs> that's why you're a good host <laughs> yeah, that's it. well because with man city i get it i i understand that everything is kind of in place for it to be the same but that in itself can lead to those cracks that can allow it to not happen mm. um because if you're just sort of waiting for something to happen instead of going and doing it again that's two different things like do do you feel like we are falling into the same trap of Man City. Are they a little bit off this year? Or do you think there's any real legs in it this, this season? I think the inevitability thing, I was falling into that sort of trap. But I, I still feel like from the summer that they didn't really strengthen as well as they should have. And that was showing me like the Rodri injuries and the suspension as soon as he's out. I mean, there's holes to be had there, isn't there? So I'm hopeful in that regard. I think it'd be interesting to see what they do in January. I don't think they'll replay, like get a backup for Rodri. Calvin Phillips is on the way out. Not that he's at the same calibre. But, I mean, on the Kevin De Bruyne thing, not only is he coming back, but he's coming back with a new hairstyle. He's he looks, coming back he looks good. Thoughts, yeah. thoughts, he, looks, he looks good. Yeah, I, I, think I personally works. love it. I think it works. I agree with you. The thing with Kevin De Bruyne that, that I, I think we're missing a little bit is, will he stay fit? Yeah. That's, that's everything. It's, say he doesn't, and I, you know, I don't want anyone to get injured, but I, he has been bizarrely both incredibly prolific, but also injury prone has missed the, you know, so much. Often players break down again. If he does do that, if that does occur, how does that change things when it comes to the title race for Man City? Do I think th in the last four or five weeks, we've probably seen Foden take on the De Bruyne role really, really well. And it's the first time even Pep has said that I wouldn't actually mind playing both of them as two advanced eights, which is scary, <laughs> scary thought. But Foden seems to have now have finally found that role and made it his. And so I think, Actually, it could end up being Haaland. It's either Haaland or De Bruyne. They need one or the other fit at all times. Mm. And you'd imagine for the last 15 games out of 18, if they keep one of them fit, they might still be all right. Uh, Foden's got a big part to play, though, for sure. Yeah, because I think that gap between, or, or sort of the loss of Amarez, Gundogan and De Bruyne for an entire season is enough to sort of take mm. a team that won the treble. And you think of the sort of the rise and the progression of of an Arsenal, Aston Villa, we'll put you in there, Liverpool, Tottenham, we're going to show you in there as well. It means that they do get a little bit closer and there could be that little bit of a wobble, there could be a bit of a, a you know, the sort of gluttony of trophies and victories could mean that they're just not totally, totally on it. I, I do get the idea if De Bruyne is fit from here to the end of the season, it is, is theirs to be lost, isn't it? Yeah. Um, let's get to the game because uh, Newcastle United at home in this one, it was a great game um, last year between the two. I think finished, I think it was three three, yeah. Um, but over the last five seasons across all competitions, Man City have won eight, Newcastle have won two. But that was, you know, there was a different era within that as well. How are we feeling about Newcastle United? Because it's been, it's been bobbly, yeah. hasn't it for them? I think. I mean, a Derby Day victory, no matter what level it is, is fantastic. Just what they needed, right? Just, yeah, just exactly what they needed. I, I've written off Eddie Howe so many times this season, where Eddie Howe, when you try to speak to him, it's like, it's either really, right, he's, they're going to challenge for the title, or the next week it's, I don't know if he's got the job. It's like so high and low. So I think write them off at your peril. I think they can get back on track. It's almost this sort of game where we do write them off and Eddie Howe pulls out a performance like we know he can do and Newcastle could get the victory. There's been a lot of talk about injuries, but I think the one that people haven't really spoken about is Devraca. Since he's come in, he came in for that United game. He only had to, he was there what, for eight minutes, I think. Uh, then Everton, Tottenham, Fulham, Luton, Forest, Liverpool. If I gave you those fixtures before 
Devraka came in, you'd go, they'd win four or five of those. They've only won one of those games mm. and they've conceded a lot of goals in that period. So I think defensively, they've become a bit more sus. Trippy is obviously out of form as well. What's happened there, by the way? It's Trippy. Oh, knackered. What a week. Yeah. That, it was that week where he was just like, <laughs> forget this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm not sure I need this anymore. Hey, they're, they're definitely, I think the sort of the jadedness you can see in a, in a few teams at this uh, stage of the season and I think this sort of mini break that they'll both all teams will have in the Premier League will be useful but none more so than Newcastle because I think that is the one thing where is it the phrase that their identity is their intensity I think that's the one that Eddie sounds likes good. to use mm, yeah sounds really good that's good isn't it uh, I think that's one where I thought they might sort of lose their way a little bit or sort of run out of gas a little bit because I think when it comes to Eddie Howe and we're going to talk about his job and I've seen a lot of stuff about the sort of ceiling of Eddie Howe and if he's reached it, whatever that means. And I'll do a rant in the next video, so save it for then. But Newcastle, there's a lot of players there where it, their superpower is that intensity. So do you think they can find it in this game if they've got enough reserves before the, uh, before the break that they're going to have? Well, I think the, the big telling, there's been some shocking results for Newcastle, but I sat down to watch that Forest game over Christmas and it just felt like the first 35 minutes they were on it completely as an Eddie Howe performance and then it just disintegrated and we mentioned Trippier, but even the likes of Dan Byrne sort of with that big drop off and it was absolutely massive. So hopefully, yeah, they can regain this and Man City is the sort of game where, yeah, they will look to, you know, like the Paris Saint-Germain game where, is that St. James Park, isn't it? Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, that, thank God. I was going down a <laughs> wrong hole. Um, <laughs> so they can use the fans and use that uh, intensity to really get on, on side. And, and like you said, that is their superpower. OK. Joe Linton likely to miss the game due to injury. Still no Willock, Wilson or Harvey Barnes. Man City have got De Bruyne on the bench, you think, Nevade, according to your sources. And uh, Jeremy Doku also ready to return from injury. And Man City have no players out for international duty, which is also something we're going to talk about in more depth. What do you think is going to happen in this one, Nevade? I just can't see how Newcastle win. I think they're too... too completely forgot the word. Tired? Scary? <laughs> too, no, definitely not scary. Probably out of tired. form? Out of form, let's, yeah, go, with let's that. go with that. But I do think we've sat here many, many times and said, like, the, the strategy they've got is to be intense and every time they've lost this season the Liverpool game where they lost 4-2 they were shattered and Liverpool were dragging them left and right I think City will do the same uh, and it feels like it'll be one of those games where De Bruyne comes off the bench scores a worldie and people go oh no here it happens for 12 games straight I really do see that so I think it'll be 3-1 to Man City I'm going to go 2-2 two, two, Dan Burn and Kieran Trippier to score. And give them <laughs> yeah, two redemption. Yeah, yeah. redemption <laughs> from redemption. Brazier there, I like that. Uh, I think this will be pretty routine for, for Man City. I remember the game at the start of the season and Foden was fantastic in that game and Man City were fantastic in that game, able to play through Newcastle really, really well and I think we'll see something similar in this one. I'm going to go for a comfortable 2-0 victory for Man City but what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. 8.20.